Hello everyone, welcome back to the 700R4 rebuild. Uh, in this episode, we're gonna show you how to measure your pump clearances using uh, both a set of feeler gauges and a straight edge, as well as uh, micrometers. And as far as the two different methods, which is gonna be more accurate, um, it's gonna be the micrometers. However, um, using a uh, straight edge with a set of feeler gauges is gonna be more than sufficient for everything but a uh, very high demand, high horsepower, or uh, heavy duty application. So, uh, now, before we get started, in the spirit of full disclosure, I actually filmed this entire segment after I completed uh, the 700R4 rebuild that is the subject of the series. And the reason I did that is because I wanted this video to kind of be separate so that folks that are in need of um, understanding how to you know, complete this process can search it via an individual video versus having it buried in the pump assembly segment. So. Um, Pump assembly will consist of uh, the pump itself along with the reverse input drum and a one two accumulator and servo. Uh, so that this way, if you just wanna watch and need to understand how to measure your clearances, you can do that um, in this one standalone video. So with that said, uh, this set of gears, uh, or I should say rotor and slide, are you know, it's a used set. It's been sitting in the drawer for I don't know how long. So. You know, it'll be interesting to see uh, how well it matches up and fares when um, paired with the pump body from a clearance perspective. So there's three different uh, measurements you need to take, three different clearances you need to derive. Um, first one's gonna be uh, the top of the rotor to the working surface. Second one is gonna be uh, the slide to the working surface or deck. And then uh, the third is gonna be your torque converter bushing uh, and your journal um, you know, there on the converter. So rotor needs between one and a half thou and two and a half thou clearance. And in your slide, you need to be between two and three thou. And then you need four thousands of clearance between the bushing and the uh, journal surface. Though in my experience with that, um, if you're between two and four thousands, you know, you're gonna be fine. So uh, one thing you should always do, and I'll just kind of start with the converter to get it out of the way. Uh, one thing you should always do is take your um, pump body with the newly installed bushing, and it's actually best if you don't have the seal installed, although the seal's installed on this one, but you know, we'll, we'll make do. You just wanna slide it onto the journal and make sure it spins freely like this, okay? And then kinda pull it back and forth, you know, um, whichever way you, know, you want, whether it be three and nine or six and 12, and you wanna make sure that there's no side play. If you can feel side play, then you got more than 4,000s clearance. So, if that's the only kind of uh, testing you do, that should be fine. Uh, you know, we'll go through the process of, uh, you know, with the feeler gauges and all that, but from the point of view of this bushing and this journal, if you, you know, test fit it and it behaves the way that this one just did, then, you know, you're good to go. Okay, so when you install your parts for the rotor, you just want to install the rotor itself, you know, with the front side facing toward the front. No rotor guide and um, no ring, you know, no pump ring. For the slide, you're just going to use the slide itself. You do not want the cover or the support O-ring installed. So generally speaking, you want to measure clearance at the six and the 12 and the three and the nine. So six, 12, three, nine. And each four points will give you a good understanding of whether or not these parts will work together. Okay, so let me uh, zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. Um, but we're gonna use uh, four different fueler gauges. We have a one and a half thou gauge a two thou gauge, a three thou gauge, and then a four thou gauge uh, that I'll use as kind of a reject gauge. So in other words, if I could slip the four thou gauge between uh, the straight edge and either the rotor or the slide, then that tells me that absolutely, um, as is, these parts won't work together. Okay, so the first uh, feeler gauge we'll use is the one and a half thou gauge. And what you wanna do is simply slide the gauge as and you know at a shallow of an angle as you can and see how it feels going underneath and you know I mean this feels like you could drive a Mack truck underneath the uh, straight edge so 
there's essentially no contact between the gauge and the bottom of that straight edge. So that tells me there's at least, at minimum, uh, two thousandths clearance, most likely a lot more. So I'm actually going to jump to using the three thou gauge and see how uh, we end up. Okay, that slides in quite easily. And same with this. So we already know we're a half a thou over. So if you wanted to stop the uh, inspection at this point, you certainly can. Um, you know, or if you wanted to just flip this uh, 90 degrees and just confirm, uh, that would be fine. We'll go through the rest of the process. But uh, if we're three thou over, at least on a high performance application, um, if three thousandths is fitting, then I would reject this combination. Or I would, you know, I'll show you or talk about it, you know, how you can remediate this. But, you know, as is, it, it wouldn't work. So now we're going to try our reject gauge. Okay, so four thousandths is actually moving the straight edge, so it's not going to fit underneath. And same here. And you want to do this multiple times with each of your uh, feeler gauges, just in case uh, you know you have it at too steep of an angle and it's moving the uh, straight edge. When in reality, you know it would, it would fit underneath if you went in at a, sh a shallow of enough angle. But here it's pretty obvious. Um, we're between three and four thousandths clearance on this rotor using this body. So. We'll go ahead and we'll rotate 90 degrees and I'm just gonna start at three thousandths. And we're sliding underneath easily. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark each of these sides here And then what I'll do is I'll write something like, get it on camera at least. So that tells me that uh, a three thou feeler gauge went in underneath the straight edge without any issue. However, the four thou gauge did not. So if a four thou gauge went under, then I would write, you know, a four, um, you know, whatever spot that would apply to. All right, so let's test the slide. So with the slide, all you want to do is just simply stick it here in its pocket where it would normally go. And if you have the little pivot pin, you can throw it in there. Okay, so for the slide, we'll first try our 2000s feeler gauge. Okay, that fits. There's a slight bit of drag, um, you know, on the uh, top side of the gauge where it's, you know, coming in contact with the straight edge. So let's see how three thousands fares. Okay, a lot of drag on this side, but it is going through. And same with here. So again, we will uh, insert our reject gauge. And we can't fit it without actually moving the uh, straight edge. All right, so what this tells me is that both the rotor and the slide uh, are out of spec. The rotor a little bit more so than the slide, just purely based on feel. But either way, I would not use this combination of rotor slide with this body as is. So I'm going to just do three thou 
at the three and nine position. Here, let me rotate it so you can see what's going on. Okay, underneath and underneath. Slides under with basically no problem whatsoever. Okay, it rejects the 408. We're actually able to slide 4 thousandths underneath of this thing, this location. And same with this location. So, again, we're at a spec by at least a thousandth of an inch here, and then we are also probably at a spec between a half a thou and maybe three quarters of a thou, again, going purely by feel here. Now, I'm sure you've noticed this already, but this pump body has been machined on a lathe, so in theory, it should be perfectly flat and true. And as I mentioned, the, the rotor and slide themselves have been just sitting in a drawer. Uh, they are probably worn out. So now with that said, it does not mean you cannot run this. Um, you just have to do a couple of things first. So if you have not enough clearance between your straight edge and either the rotor or the slide, what you want to do is get some uh, 400 grit sandpaper, a big sheet of it, you know, whatever, 8 by 10 sheet. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your rotor or your slide and you're just going to go back and forth. You know, uh, you can go in one direction or you can go in two directions. I actually typically just go in one direction. And that should be enough to take about a thou or so off of it without messing anything up in terms of, you know, it's you know, being flat and true. Uh, that should be able to get you where you need to be from a clearance perspective. And, you know, same with the uh, rotor. Now, we have kind of the opposite problem. What we need to do is we need to reduce the distance between the deck surface and uh, the working surface on the pump. So, again, same method, a sheet of sandpaper, 400 grit to start, and then finish up with 600 grit, and just, you know, keep sliding it just like this until you can knock off about a thousandth. And that's where I would, uh, you know, recommend if you're only about a thou, maybe a thou and a half off. If you're off more than that, or, you know, if, if you have a dramatic difference in terms of, uh, you know, what feeler gauges will fit, you know, so like, let's just say, if this number here was maybe uh, three or, or two, but this is like five, then that would tell me that your um, working surface is probably worked as well. And I would just have the pump either remachined or, you know, go get a reman pump. And, you know, make no mistake, even when you get a reman pump, you need to open them up. You need to first make sure that they're actually remanned. Because um, I've gotten several, you know, over the years that were actually cores in a in remanufactured pump, uh, you know, packaging and box. So you always want to check because you never know. And then, you know, run your uh, feeler gauges so that you can at least be assured that that reman pump is actually within spec. So anyway, uh, that's how we uh, use feeler gauges and a straight edge to measure pump clearances on a 700R4 or 4L60E. And, um, you know, for uh, daily driver stock low intensity applications, this method is perfectly fine. Um, if you're Doing anything really high performance, uh, racing, street strip, uh, you know, severe or like heavy duty off road or towing and hauling, anything like that, I'd strongly recommend you use micrometers instead because you are going to get more precise measurements and it is just simply a more accurate method, though it is a little bit more tedious. So uh, we'll clear up the bench um, and then get the micrometers back on and we'll show you how to do that. All right, so now we're gonna use micrometers, have everything set up uh, to record our measurements and calculate our clearances. So what we'll do is I'll run through real quick just how to read a micrometer for level setting and then we'll get into the measurements. So we're gonna use both 
an outside micrometer as well as a depth micrometer. And uh, the outside micrometer has resolution down to one ten thousandth of an inch, which is what I recommend for um, measuring anything related to transmission building or engine building or, you know, similar. Um, because most of the time the factory will give specs down to the uh, ten thousandth of an inch. All right, so micrometer is a simple device. It's got five main parts. Uh, you have the anvil, the spindle, uh, the sleeve, and the thimble, and then of course you have your frame. So the scales are as follows. On the sleeve, there's two scales here in one. The numbers represent tenth of an inch or tenth of an inch graduations, whereas the smaller hash marks represent graduations in twenty-five thousandths of an inch. On the thimble, you have your one thousandth of an inch scale, and then on the back side of the sleeve, you have your one ten thou scale. So you want to measure your rotor and your slide and your body in four different places at least uh, to get a truly accurate measurement. Now the video will be very very long if I actually did that so I'm going to run through an example measuring the rotor, the slide and the body in one position and then we'll calculate the um, uh, clearance for that position. So first I want to do is set the rotor into the body, excuse me the slide and then of course the rotor and I want to make sure I know which position I'm going to measure so that the measurements will be relevant because I want to measure the rotor and the slide let's just say here and here and then I want to make sure I also measure the body here so those three measurements um, you know will be taken into account uh, we know we're working at the same location Okay, so this is tricky to do um, like this because I'm filming. Normally what I would do is I would chuck the workpiece into a soft jawed vise and then use both hands on the micrometer so that I can get a really, really fine reading and be confident that the, you know, um, you know, the reading is correct. But, you know, we'll wing it like this just so you have an idea of what's involved. All right, so uh, spin the thimble down until... Um, the spindle makes contact with uh, the workpiece while it's making positive contact on the anvil and then whatever that number is that's what you're going to read so you may have to back it off and then cinch it down back it off cinch it down just to be sure that you know your technique is sound so if we're looking at this we see we have seven uh, tenths of an inch here exposed, but we do not have the first uh, 25 thou hash mark exposed there on the sleeve, so we know we can go right to uh, the thimble for the 1 thou scale. So what this is telling us is we have 708 thou, just slightly over if I'm looking at this visually. So now we'll flip over to the 10 thou scale, and what we're looking for is uh, whatever hash mark here on the sleeve is most closely aligned with the corresponding hash mark on the thimble, and that number is going to be what we're going to add to the others. So as you can see, there's not a lot of alignment until we get to 2. 2 is most perfectly lined up. So this is telling me that I have a measurement here of 7082 or 0 0.7082. So that's the number I'm going to record. And because we're doing this visually 3 and 9, I'll just record it over here. Okay, next, I'm going to measure the slide in pretty much the same location. So it's going to correspond to this check mark. Again, yeah, doing what I can not to be uh, super sloppy with it. And the one thing with the slide is you're going to measure it without the uh, cover and the support O-ring. So you got that groove there. It's messing with your, you know, your um, uh, ability to get the micrometer on there. So, you, you know, you just want to kind of do it a, a multiple times until you're confident you have um, everything right. Okay, 
Yeah, it seems like a little tight, so I'm gonna just go at it one more time. Okay. So it looks like we're slightly above the eight. So it looks like it's gonna be seven zero eight four. I know my handwriting sucks. Okay, before we measure the pump body, I'll make mention the ATSG manual for both the 700R4 as well as the 4L60E has this uh, selection chart here for your rotor and your slide. There's five different thicknesses available. So you wanna make sure that A, your measurements are falling into the range of one of these um, here on the chart. And then from there, you can know based on your measurements which uh, thickness of rotor or slides you need. Now, unfortunately, there's probably not going to um, you know, be a situation where you can walk into your parts supplier and say, hey, I need a rotor that's 780, um, you know, two thousandths thick. You know, give me something 0.7082 because that's what I need for my clearance. Uh, you know, I don't think they're going to you know, start pulling rotors and slides out of the box and, and mic them. But... Um, you know, if you have a, a supplier that has a few on the shelf, you can bring your own micrometer and measure them and at least maybe, um, you know, get one that you know for a fact will work based on what you're trying to do. Now, if that's not an option for you, you're just under the gun, then you can resort to, you know, sanding the body or sanding the rotor and slide, um, as I described a little bit earlier. Okay, so this is a gauge bar. Uh, it's actually used for another transmission, and to be honest with you, I don't remember offhand, I think it's a Ford uh, of some sort, but um, what it's designed to do is uh, measure, I believe, end play on whatever transmission or transmission. So we're going to use it here to measure depth, and this micrometer measures in out to one uh, thousandth of an inch, so it's not as fine as we would like, but you know, it'll have to do, we'll have to eyeball the difference. Um, but you really want something uh, that has the resolution down to one ten thou of an inch if you were doing this for real, um, at least on a high performance application. So what I'll do is I will run the um, I'll run the spindle all the way down so that there's you know a little bit of gap between the bridge of the micrometer and the uh, gauge itself, and I'll just start backing it off until you know there's no uh, no more gap. And then I'll run it down again. A little bit of downward pressure on the bridge until I make contact with that surface. And then once I do, I'm going to lock it down. And that's going to be my measurement. Okay, so it looks like we're a shade over... Um, one and 412 thousandths of an inch. We know we have at least one inch into this, so um, we're just gonna read uh, the scale here on the sleeve. And we have um, four showing, but we're not quite over the uh, first 25 thousandths hash mark, so we're gonna use the uh, scale here on the thimble. And I would say, just visually speaking, we're looking at, um, you know, point four, one, two, two. Let's call it that. All right, so now we know we have to subtract. We know we have to do some, some math here because we got a 700 thousandths of an inch gauge bar to account for. Okay, let's do the math. All right, so 712 thousandths.
Okay, so what we would then do is start subtracting our figure here from our, these two figures from this figure to get the clearance. So this is telling me um, 0 0.0038 or 38 ten thousandths. So for the rotor, I'm just going to, I mean, I don't know if this is the max. I'm only doing, you know, one set of measurements, but that's what I'm dealing with as far as rotor clearance in that location. So we'll do the slide. So we're at 36 ten thou. So what did we say that uh, our clearances needed to be? So for max, for the rotor, it was 0 0.0025. For the slide, our max was 0 0.003. So we're at plus six thou. And we're at plus 13 ten thou for the rotor in that location. And that squares with what we came up with the field gauges. So again, this was high performance. You don't have to do any more measurements. Um, I mean, you know that these components will not work together. They will not play nice, at least not in a high RPM type deal. So uh, for a stock application, it's, it's really a judgment call. Uh, I wouldn't have any qualms about putting this into a purely factory application. Um, you know, it should last. Uh, again, it's, it's really up to you based on what your experience is. But um, if you're building one of these for the first time, especially if it's not for you, it's for someone else, um, I would recommend just sticking with the factory clearances. And if you're not within spec, then doing whatever you got to do to get to within spec so that you know that when it goes out the door or back in the vehicle, it's 100% good to go in that respect. So anyway, that is measuring uh, pump clearances using both feeler gauges as well as mics. I uh, hope this was informative for you. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below. I'll respond as soon as I possibly can. Uh, but otherwise, uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you uh, want to continue on with the build, um, you know, go to the next section where we put the pump assembly and drums and accumulator as well as the servo together. And, you know, ultimately toward um, getting everything ready to go into the barrel of the case. So thanks again.